Thanks. Jim Edwards here for MMALatestNews.com. Today I'm joined by one of C's welterweight champion, Mr. Ben Askren. Ben, uh, first of all, how are you doing today, pal? I'm doing well. I've got uh, one workout in the books, and I'm going to leave fairly shortly to get my second one done, and then I'll have a nice, easy day after that. Yeah, so last time I spoke to you in January, you were awaiting your bout announcement. It's obviously been announced now. On April 15th, you're going to face a guy called Nikolai Aleshkin on the uh, 1FC's Global Rivals show. Can you uh, give me an idea just a little bit about Aleshkin? What kind of fight are you expecting? Well, he's got a combat sambo background. So uh, the first guy I fought in one championship was the World Bronze Medals in combat sambo. So I think I got, I got a decent idea of what to expect, and uh, I'm excited to get in the cage and fight. Yeah, I, I'm sure you are. Obviously, it's uh, obviously your last fight didn't go ahead. Um, uh, Luis Santos uh, did actually happen to compete back at that welter in that welterweight division in February. What did you kind of make of that when he just jumped straight back in the cage? Um, you know, I want the one championship was very frustrated with him after what happened in November because it was just it was completely ridiculous on. Uh, on all accounts, so I guess they had a, uh, you know, I guess they had they gave him a second chance. Yeah, um, I guess. Uh, I mean, would you ever be interested in rerunning that one back with him, or are you just done? Yeah, with I just said uh, I'd love to fight him, but uh, you know, I said one one would have to have a backup opponent ready just in case he pulled any shenanigans like last time. So I would make sure that they had someone ready and willing to fight on short notice if uh, if Luis Santos pulled some shenanigans. Well, you you are going to be fighting, obviously, on April 15th, and this time around it's going to be at middleweight. What's kind of, how have your preparations differed, if at all, uh, leading into this fight in April? Well, it's not, I mean, it's it's actually, they actually renamed the 185 welterweight. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, because they do, they're doing the walking around weight now, which I think is really cool, and they're the first promotion to really... Um, go exclusively to this format. So the format is you weigh in the day of the fight and you have to um, pass a, a urine, your urine test to show that you're hydrated. So I think it's unique. I think it's good. And, and frankly, um, my weight from where I usually cut for to 170 from 183 to 185 was where I would walk around every day at. And so, you know, it's essentially the exact same thing for me because i got to walk around 183 to 185 hydrated and that's what I... That's kind of what I always planned on doing for my fight, so I think we're good to go. Yeah, good stuff. And I kind of, uh, you, you're going to be fighting the Philippines uh, this time. Does that kind of change uh, any of your kind of preparations? Is that awkward for you? All good. That was where I fought. I fought last year. You know, so I actually owe the Philippine Filipino fans uh, a good performance because, unfortunately, they had to watch the eye poke, and it was just, it wasn't a good way to end the night of fights. It was a terrible way to end the night of fights. Yeah, no, so obviously you get a big opportunity back on uh, April 15th. And what's the what's the kind of situation with your 1FC contract right now? How, how many have you got left on that after this fight in uh, against Alessia Kim? After this fight, I'll have five fights left. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with one, happy with how it's going, and i got quite a few fights left on my contract. And I guess, is there, is there anyone else you're kind of eyeing up in one since you've got all these fights left? No, uh, I mean, obviously I'd love to beat up Luis Santos if he actually shows up. Uh, so I think that would probably be next on my docket after this. But, uh, you know, one's growing rapidly, so I'm sure they're going to be continuing to sign uh, fighters for me to fight. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they are. And obviously back at the uh, back, back at the MMA Awards, we did see you do a, a nice uh, parody of Adele. But the first question of that I've got to ask is, was it, was it actually your voice? Come on. Why would you even question that? Well, it, it was beautiful, Ben. You, you've got a career in singing. I, I, can't, I can't sing worth a damn. <laughs> but what, what was that? Was that just purely a parody, purely a joke, or was there any seriousness in that? No, it was a joke. Uh, Adam Hunter, who's uh, MMA roasted, you know, it was his kind of his idea. The MMA awards, they they get him to do a few parodies a year, and I thought it was, you know, when he sent me the idea, I thought it was hilarious, and uh, it turned out really well. And unfortunately, they had some copyright infringements, and it had to be taken down after a few days. So that was, that part was really unfortunate, but I think it went really well. No way, that's that's crazy. It, it seemed to get around a lot of places beforehand anyway. it's uh, So it was certainly worth doing, and like, like you said, it was genuinely funny. Now, um, I guess, aside from singing, uh, another passion of yours is obviously wrestling. 
Um, I'm, a, I'm a totally uh, naive European speaking here, but I believe there was the NCAA championships a few weeks ago. Yeah. I, I kind of wanted to get your kind of perception of how that event went, because from what I could tell, it was obviously quite a really big deal this year, and there was there were some people that really stood out. Yeah, it was it was at Madison Square Garden, so I think that was a pretty big deal, and uh, it was awesome. I mean, there was a lot of great matches, a lot of great storylines, um, and then the finals was just completely outstanding. So, you know, I think, and I, I, I said this, and I think a lot of other people agree with me, that it was probably the best NCAA finals in my memory, um, and I've been watching for a long time now. Uh, every match was action-packed. I think there was only... Uh, maybe one that was really like not competitive, where one guy was a lot better than the other guy. Yeah. So uh, match was just a, a tight, hard-fought match, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. And you know, I thought it came off great on TV. Is there any like one name that you could give me just to say, look out for this guy? He he's uh, he's dangerous. Uh, uh, there'll be fighters, you mean? Yeah. Man, it's so hard to say because none of them really uh, state their intentions. Mm. Uh, to fight, you know, any of those guys would be great fighters, um, but they don't really. I, I don't think any of them have stated their intention to do mixed martial arts, even though you know I think they would all be outstanding at it. Right, and uh, well, I mean, I guess we were talking a minute ago about your your expectations for one to grow a lot bigger. I, I saw you interacting with a, with another guy from another promotion on Twitter the other day. I think you you were you were interacting with a guy called Frank Miranda of Venator FC. Um, I, yeah. I, I wanted to quickly ask you, what, what do you make of this? What do you make of this promotion? They're they're doing some pretty crazy stuff, don't you think? I mean, what that guy's saying is like, is hilarious. Like, I was, I think that the thing I said to him is like, is this, is this like, is this real? Like, or you know, is this a big joke? Because some of the stuff you say, you know, he's saying is like, you're thinking, okay, this has to be a joke. Like, this has to be an April Fool's Day prank that someone's pulling on us. Because, I mean, I'm not even gonna repeat some of the stuff he says. It's just, it's just insane. There's no other way to slice that. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, a few people have said that. But I do, I do believe it is a, it's, it's a legitimate promotion. I believe, obviously, they, they, they got their show in May. Um, now, I mean, of course. But what do you make of it? You think this guy? You think this guy's <laughs> I, I've talked to him. Person? I've talked to him at great length. I think he's, uh, I think he's, I think he's trying to get some attention, and I think he's not perhaps going about it in the right way with some of the things he's saying and you know I say that hand on heart but who but he's saying crazy stuff I mean like really crazy stuff yeah yeah some pretty crazy stuff and, and it's getting his name out there but uh, I mean that there's always the there's always the question you have to ask is is this the right attention because people like yourself have questioned is this actually a, you know a legitimate thing but um, yeah I guess we'll see I guess we'll see it'll be it'll be exciting nonetheless um, yeah we'll see I've got to ask you your your expert opinion currently, I guess, on the well, the UFC welterweight picture at the moment, with a certain Conor McGregor making an appearance uh, at the start of this month. Anyway, um, what's kind of your expert opinion on? We're all hearing that they're going to rerun that back for UFC 200. What do you think happens? I don't think anyone's excited about that. I mean, we saw what happened, and frankly, um, you know, people are trying to make it out like McGregor was at the biggest disadvantage, but. Nate Diaz is realistically a 55-pounder. He's fought there for the last, I don't know, five years. It's been a long time since he fought welterweight. And then he was on vacation. I mean, he was out partying. He said he was partying in Cabo with uh, Gil Melendez, I believe, just hanging out, having a good time, not worrying about fighting. And he comes off of, uh, you know, what, 10 days' notice and and, uh, and whoops his ass. So, um, you know, I don't know that anyone's really excited to see that fight again. I guess I'll, I, I maybe I'll watch it. I don't know, but um, I think there's, you know, I really think Frankie Edgar is getting the really short end of the stick, and um, if McGregor's going to be the the featherweight champion, he should defend that belt. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, that's quite a shared opinion, but it does it does obviously look like the UFC are, are going to go in a different direction. Um, well, one thing I'm always interested in hearing kind of your opinion on is the the kind of USADA testing because you've been quite outspoken since and you, you I remember you saying to me you, you just watch some of the, the you know some of the different performances we're going to see from some of the guys uh, another kind of three or four months on it, you still have that opinion because uh, I think that's probably quite a shared one now um 
Yeah, I mean, I'm excited what uh, what USADA is doing because I think, uh, yeah, I think I think it, you know, it caught quite a few people so far, and I think they'll probably continue to catch quite a few people, um, and it'll it'll clean the sport up. So yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, and what what, what about this year for you? I, I want to know how, how many times do you want to fight, and how many times are you kind of expecting? Yeah, I'm trying to fight three times, and one said they're going to make that happen. I have not fought three times in a year since 2010, so it's been a while. But I'm excited to get uh, get in the cage and stay active and stay busy because this is what I do for a living, and I want to do it as frequently as possible. Yeah, of course, and obviously, as I was saying earlier, your fight with um, uh, Alessia Kin is on April 15th. How how can we watch that? So stateside in Europe, is that, is, is that online streaming? Yeah, you just have to go to the website, one championship website, and they'll have the link to the stream. But um, obviously it's broadcast all across Asia on TV. So the easiest way would be just to go to Asia. <laughs> I, I wish I could, my friend. I wish I could. But unfortunately, I, it does look like I would be having to stream this one. But as I said, it's on April 15th. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Ben, is there any, uh, obviously, can you just give us a quick shout out where we can find your Twitter, but also your wrestling podcast, I know, which has really taken off in the last few months. Yeah, uh, well, you know, all my social media is pretty simple. It's just my name. I don't have anything fancy, so it's at Ben Askren. It's Ben Askren on Facebook. Um, and then our podcast is called The T-Row and Funky Show, which you can find on iTunes, and you can also find it on SoundCloud. Uh, it's me and another guy who was a, he was also a two-time NCAA champion. He was from Ohio State. His name's Tommy Rollins. Um, and it's going well. It's exciting. I love just talking about wrestling. I mean, wrestling's, you know, that's where my heart is. That's where I've been doing since I was five years old. So it's nice just to get on there and, and talk about wrestling. Yeah, I'm sure it is, man. It is, it's a really good podcast. I'd uh, implore everyone to go, go check it out. So, um, Ben, I've taken way too much of your time today. Thank you so much. Um, hopefully, I'll speak to you after, after your fight with Alessia King. That would be good to catch up then. Sounds good. Have a great day. Yeah, cheers, Ben. Catch you later. See ya.